What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you had a good week. Today, we're going to be continuing our series on the New Apostolic Reformation. So let's delve in. Hello, everyone. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Alan. So let's take a look at another leading figure in the movement, this time an individual from Africa. In the forefront of the religious movement in Africa is Enoch Although not a household name among most American evangelicals, he is nevertheless an incredibly popular teacher worldwide. Enoch was born into a very poor family in 1942 in the southwestern part of Nigeria, but his upbringing never deterred him from his goals. The charismatic leader obtained a number of degrees, including a PhD in mathematics. Initially, he served as a part-time teacher at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, but later became general overseer. Under his leadership, RCCG has experienced phenomenal growth. But sadly, like the late Dr. Peter Wagner, Enoch has endorsed the false prosperity gospel. He has even said that if a person does not pay their tithes, then they are going to hell. The popular scholar not only embraces word of faith heresy, he also promotes the NAR idea that there are modern day apostles and prophets. In alignment with the New Apostolic Reformation goal of expansion, Enoch oversees a network of over 40,000 parish churches in 186 nations. In the U.S., there are over 600 RCCG branches, with the largest concentrations located in Maryland, Texas, Illinois, California, and Washington, D.C. The religious leader sees the local gathering as one of the focal points of discipleship, and his goal is to have an RCCG branch within five minutes of every home in the world. Unlike many false charismatic leaders, Enoch employs a calmer and more measured tone in his presentations. His appearance is straight-laced. He dresses in a pinstripe suit with a bow tie. He is the author of over 60 books, and his 1998 open-air meeting drew an attendance of over 7 million, a feat never before recorded. Many consider Enoch to be a modern-day prophet. So we've already taken a look at NAR apostles in previous videos. So this time around, let's take a look at the prophets. If NAR apostles are viewed as generals in God's army, then NAR prophets are seen as secret intelligence agents. They receive information about the enemy's plans and the strategies that the church needs in order to defeat Satan and his allies. In support of their view of prophets, NAR leaders often cite Amos 3.7. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants, the prophets. They believe that this text means that God always reveals his plans in advance to his prophets. You will frequently see NAR prophets reveal their new revelations which they claim to have received from God released at conferences. You can go on YouTube right now and you'll find videos in which Enoch and others reveal their prophecies for a given year. But are there really prophets today? Well, there are three primary views which are out there in relation to the subject. Firstly, there are partial cessationists like myself who believe that the gift of prophecy ceased after the canon of scripture was completed in writing. The middle position is held by many classical Pentecostals and Charismatics. They believe that certain people can give revelations to individuals or local churches, but they do not believe that present day apostles can give new revelation to the universal church. And the vast majority of individuals in this second group do not believe in the modern day office of prophet in the same way that NAR advocates do. The third position is the one at the far end, and that is the NAR position. NAR advocates believe that modern day prophets possess authority similar to, not identical, but similar to that of Old Testament prophets and that this authority extends to individuals, churches, and nations. In the Bible, a prophet was a person who spoke for God. In the Old Testament, prophets received direct revelation from God through dreams, visions, angels, and audible messages. 
Old Testament prophets provided guidance to Israel's leaders, such as the prophet Nathan did to King David. They also prophesied to other nations like Jonah and Jeremiah did. Additionally, Old Testament prophets wrote scripture for God's people. One important aspect to remember about Old Testament prophets is that they served as God's covenant lawyers. In the prophetic literature, you will frequently see the prophets calling God's people to covenant faithfulness and obedience to God's law and to turn away from the false idols who they have been seduced by. In the New Testament, the main function of the prophet was to edify God's people, as we see in 1 Corinthians 14. Some prophets were also given the gift of foresight, as Agabus was in Acts 11, when he predicted the famine that would take place during the reign of Claudius. There are a plethora of false prophets in both the Old and New Testaments. False prophets included pagan prophets, who claimed to speak on behalf of pagan deities, as was the case of the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the Asherah during the reign of King Ahab. Additionally, there were false prophets who claimed to speak on behalf of Yahweh, such as Zedekiah and the 400 prophets who were with him, as recorded in 1 Kings 22. False prophets are also found in the New Testament. Jesus warned us to beware of false prophets who come to us in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. No, there are not. Let's interact with a couple of NAR arguments in relation to the subject of prophets. One very distinctive element of NAR theology is the idea that there is a present-day office of prophet. NAR proponents like Bill Hammond contend that since there were prophets in the Old Testament who had governing authority, then that must mean that there were probably prophets in the New Testament as well who also had governing authority. But despite the fact that in the Old Testament, prophets did have leadership roles, there is no evidence that the office of prophet meant that a person had a governing authority. In the Old Testament, the leadership role was always assumed by judges and kings. In the case of Samuel, his authority to govern came from his office as judge, not from his role as a prophet. And there is no evidence that New Testament prophets held a governing role in the church. It assumes facts which are not in evidence. The three big texts for NAR proponents are Ephesians 2.20, Ephesians 4.11, and 1 Corinthians 12.28. Ephesians 2.20 does state that prophets alongside apostles had a foundational role in the church. But a foundational role is not equivalent to an office. Furthermore, Ephesians 4.11 does not prescribe offices either. It simply lists five types of gifted leaders. Dr. Anthony Thistleton, who has written the most extensive commentary on 1 Corinthians, a 1,500-page volume, has said, It would go beyond the limits of exegesis to assume that the gift of prophecy belongs any more permanently to some specific individual as an office than the gifts of faith or kinds of healings. The epistle of 1 Corinthians remains silent on this matter. Other than the apostles of Christ, who held exclusive offices, the only two offices which the New Testament recognizes are those of elder and deacon. 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1 lay out the qualifications for elders and deacons. No such qualifications are given for an office of prophet within the pages of the New Testament. And both cessationist and continuationist critics of NAR point out that to continue to use the term prophet for modern day leaders only leads to confusion. We should do our best to avoid using either the term apostle or prophet to describe leaders in the church today. If you want to study this subject further on your own, a book I would highly recommend to you is A New Apostolic Reformation, A Biblical Response to a Worldwide Movement. The majority of the analysis in this video is courtesy of those two authors. Personally, I find the New Apostolic Reformation to be a fascinating movement, but nevertheless a dangerous and deadly movement within Christendom today. 
All right, that's a wrap. Ladies and gents, if you have your own thoughts, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Have an awesome week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.